So last time we were looking at this book of ours and finding out what we could learn both from what's there and from what's not there. This time we're looking at the reverse. We have a single leaf cut from a larger manuscript. Heather, can we learn anything from just a single leaf? That's a great question, Colleen. Let's find out. Okay, <laughs> when you look at this leaf, what's something that just screams out to you? Well, the first thing I notice is is the size. I notice how big it is as the very first thing. It's bigger than almost all of our manuscripts here in the collection. And when you put it up next to the manuscript from episode one and the manuscript from episode two, you can see that it's it's very unusual. The size is unusual, right? Okay, so that is a big part of what this manuscript is telling us. I also think that it's really important to have a look at the music and the text. It's going to tell us a lot if we can find out a bit more about it. Okay. And finally, I think this decorated capital. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the first things that you notice about this manuscript. It's gorgeous and it's beautifully executed mm -hmm. for this kind of manuscript. So it might make you think that perhaps it was a display manuscript, but we don't know yet. We need to do some research. Yeah, we need to find out more. I'm not an expert on medieval music at all. Do you know what we need? I know exactly what we need. A, a medieval, medieval musicologist. musicologist. Let's welcome music historian Michelle Eichley. I think it's time to go do some research. Let's do it. <laughs> that we investigated about this manuscript is the size because it's just so big. Heather, can you tell some of the things that we learned about the size of this manuscript? Yes, we researched some images of medieval music manuscripts in use. And what we found is they were often very large and they were held on a lectern or a podium so that a choir could sing them. Mm -hmm. The one copy could be seen by five or more people in a choir. And the reason that there would probably be just the one copy is because it would have been quite expensive to have individual copies for each choir member. Oh, so even though this is really beautifully illuminated, it's still just one. It's still just one manuscript. Right. Mm -hmm. So the second thing we investigated was the content of this leaf of the manuscript. And that involved two parts, the music notation and the text. So Michelle, can you tell us some of the things that we investigated about the musical notation? Yes. First, we investigated the four-line staff and the shape of the notes here. Here, they are square, and they're filled in black. And in a lot of the examples we have, they aren't necessarily filled in, or they're different shapes. Um, in one of our earlier examples, they're little squiggly lines just telling what the contour I is. remember those. We saw those. That was amazing, and this is so different. Does it tell us anything about the date? Because of the shape. Right. The fact that they're black and filled in notes, they're a little bit spaced out, it looks very well planned out. Yeah. And the fact that it's a four line staff and the shape of these clefts tell yeah. me that it is somewhere in the 15th century. You see, that's what that's I was interesting. thinking. Interesting. Yeah. That's what I was thinking when we look at the script. I was thinking that's much more 15th century than 16th century. So, do we know? Does this notation help us identify the chant itself? This is the Ate Domine Levavi offertory chant for the first mass of the year of Advent. Ate Yeah. 
folio two, three, or four in the manuscript. And that makes so much sense. Okay. So it's been trimmed, but we still have that little bit of evidence of the, the eye or the, the right. number there. And I knew it was important because it's in red. Mm -hmm. So I just couldn't place exactly what it was. But that's fantastic to know. Absolutely brilliant. So then if we start to sum up the things that we found, we know that this was sung by a choir. Correct. Because we know that this text was sung during the Mass, mm -hmm. um, and we know that it was an offertory part of the Mass, then we know that it was sung by a choir, and that also connects to the label of it being a gradual, because the choir books were so large so that the entire choir could sing them. That's fabulous. It all meshes together. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Heather, in the beginning your hypothesis was that this was a display copy because of this beautiful illuminated initial. Um, what did the research tell? Well, I was going to turn to Michelle for that. Does this look to you like a display manuscript, perhaps? It does a little bit with this beautifully illuminated D, but then we also have these three notes right here. If you look at how squished together these two in particular are, and then this one right here, these three notes are actually a different shade, and which indicates to me that it was done at a later time with a different ink and pen. So to me, that looks like somebody later on, after they were singing it, made some changes as to what pitches were to be sung. Sure. So that also They're just adding notes in the script. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it's being used then. It's being used. So it's not just a display script. It is not just a display script. So then why would this be so beautiful? In many cases, we have a lot of large manuscripts like this mm -hmm. that would have been both used and used as display. Because they're okay. so big, they can be seen by more than just the choir. Right. And sometimes they were used to inspire devotion. Okay. So, so, so that it's worth investing the money and making something so beautiful to inspire lots of people who are able to see it because it's so large. Yes. So yeah. inspiration, but also maybe a little bit of status in there as well. Definitely, especially with this gold leaf. Those right. aren't cheap. You right. want to show how great or how wonderful your church is. You're going to try and include stuff like that. Okay, so we've looked at the size. We've looked at the text and the notation. We've looked at the decorated capital all on one single manuscript leaf. And what's it told us? It's told us who sang it, mm -hmm. where it's been sung, when it was sung. When it was sung in the liturgical year and also in the Mass. And some information about who was able to see it and maybe how much money they invested in it and its, its importance. And all of this from one single leaf. From one single leaf. And so that's what the leaf was telling us. Domino. Oh, no. 